Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So recently I got my hands on some Alder Lake CPUs for testing. If you haven't seen my last video, you can go ahead and check that out. And since I got my hands on those, there's been one question that's really been bugging me and it's, is DDR5 really that bad? If you're like me and you see all the content out there, you kind of get this perception that DDR5 is just not good right now. And I wanted to test that out myself while I have the capability to do so. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. What I saw, and I'm actually rather impressed with my findings, but we will also discuss the drawbacks as there are many. So if you're interested in seeing future technology here today, that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So jumping straight into it, let's talk about the parts used. I use the Intel Core i9-12900K and the Intel Core i5-12600K. This took a little bit of time away from benchmarking games, but I wanted to see if the 12600K also benefited from the higher memory speeds. And for the memory, Kingston was kind enough to send some over for testing. In the initial video, I used the Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 3200CL16, which is the most common DDR4 memory type. So those numbers are being transferred over to this video, but they also sent over their Kingston Fury Renegade DDR4 4000CL19 memory. So this way we have faster DDR4 to compare to DDR5. And they also sent over the Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 5200 CL40 kit, which is kind of a middle of the road kit right now for DDR5. And my buddy Austin was kind enough to let me borrow his RTX 3090 once again for testing. So I wanna thank him for that. And he hung out while we did the benchmark. So that was kind of fun. Uh, due to limited time with the 3090, only three games were tested, but we did use a lot of configurations. So kicking things off with Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, high preset, no alterations. We have the Core i9-12900K coming in at 126 and 100 on the 1% 1 low for the DDR4 3200. With 4000, we have 128 and 99, so virtually no change. And with DDR5 5200, 128 average and a 103 1% 1 low. So virtually unchanged there. The 12600K is very similar down below. You have 126 and 94, which gets bumped up to 128 and 99 at DDR4 4000. And the DDR5 brings it up to 130 and 103. Now, these are all within margin of error for testing. So for me, this game is basically the same because we're still not at the point where we're very CPU limited. This is a GPU limited game at 1080p with an RTX 3090, which just goes to show how how unoptimized this game really is. But I wanted to throw this in there because it does, it does show that not every game is going to benefit from the faster RAM. However, our next two games are very CPU demanding, and as you'll see, they do fare much better. So moving on over to Watch Dogs Legion, starting with the i9-12900K. With DDR4 3200, we get 125 average with 94 on the 1% low. Going to DDR4 4000 jumps that all the way up to 140 FPS on average and 106 on the 1% low. So that's a substantial gain. And then moving to DDR5 5200, we go to 150 FPS and 119 on the 1% low. So we went from a 1% low of 94 to almost 120 FPS on the 1% low. So that is monster. An absolute upgrade going from basically the stock standard DDR4 up to mid-range DDR5. With the 12600K, we see similar performance uplifts going from 115 on average with a 91% low on DDR4 3200 to 127 FPS and 92 on the 1% low at DDR4 4000. So not as substantial as of a gain there, but looking at DDR5 5200, we go up to 135 FPS on average and 105 on the 1% low. Meaning with DDR5, the 12600K is actually faster than the 12900K with DDR4 3200. So that's very impressive. Even DDR4 4000 with the 12600K brings it up to the i9-12900K level with DDR4 3200. So substantial up uplifts for both of them. The 12900K to me just is more impressive since we're basically getting 1% lows at 120 FPS. 
And the final game that I had time to test was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You guys know I love this one for CPU testing. So kicking it off with the 12900K with DDR4 3200, we get 184 FPS on average and 130 on the 1% low. Moving that up to DDR4 4000 gets us 193 FPS on average and 152 on the 1% low. So that is monstrous. That is a huge gain on that 1% low. And moving on over to DDR5 5200, we go up to 194 FPS. Not a big deal, but the 1% low gets bumped up to 161 FPS. So once again, that's a substantial gain on that 1% low. Taking a look at the 12600K, DDR4 3200 comes in at 172 FPS on average and 116 FPS on the 1% low. With DDR4 4000, we get up to 182 FPS on average and 121 FPS on the 1% low. So that's a pretty good jump there. And then moving on up to the DDR5 5200, that bumps us all the way up to 188 FPS on average, so a bigger gain on the average FPS, and a 1% low of 133, which is another monstrous jump. So once again, if we take a look at the 12600K with DDR5, it's basically matching the 12900K with DDR4 3200. So it's very clear that under very CPU demanding situations, both CPUs have more to give as long as you have faster RAM to go with it. And that's really the main takeaway that I got from this. Basically, the single thread performance of the 12th gen Intel Core processors is so high that you need the fastest memory there is to get the maximum out of them when that is the limiting factor. Now, I know what you're saying. Other guys out there found different results, but I'm taking a look over here at TechSpot. This is Steve Walton's numbers from Hardware Unboxed, where he used DDR5 6000 CL36, which is much better than what I have, and he compared that to DDR4 3600 CL14, which I guess you could say is probably pretty similar to the DDR4 4000 that I used. And over his testing, he only found a 4% average better performance. Now, there's two reasons why this could be. Number one, he's using a 6900 XT, which has less CPU overhead. The RTX 3090 has higher CPU overhead. So the NVIDIA cards may benefit more. But let's just take that out of the equation. As you can see here, some games do have some regression. Now, these games are just the way that they are. I don't know how his Shadow of the Tomb Raider is getting so much lower than mine. But at the same time, I think that's due to the GPU. But he's, he sees some regression. However, in certain games, he is showing 20 plus percent performance increases or 15 percent significant performance increases in certain titles. And that's basically what I found as well. So for right now, it's gonna be very game dependent how much extra performance you're gonna get. But it, to me, it's very clear, the more CPU limited you are, which using an NVIDIA GPU adds more CPU dependency, that will help out there as well. So if you're one of the people out there that need the absolute fastest, like I talked about in the last video, if you're somebody buying an i9-12900K or waiting for Zen 3D, you're probably gonna wanna pair that with the absolute fastest RAM you can get your hands on, as these CPUs that are coming out are so powerful that they're being limited by stock standard DDR4 at this point, which is a good thing. I mean, we're moving over to a new standard, and now there's an actual reason to go ahead and do so. Here's the proof, there it is. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going, well, it doesn't make sense for me today. Absolutely not. For people today, this is for the people that don't care about price to performance. And that seems to be the biggest gripe that people have out there. It's not worth it to buy at the price points relative to DDR4. However, once again, if you're buying something like a 3090 Ti because it's 5% faster than a 3090, you don't really care about price to performance. Those people, that's who, DDR5 is meant for today. However, next year or the year after, for the rest of us, DDR5 is gonna make a lot more sense, and the performance uplift that I'm showing you right here, it will be yours at a reasonable price point. Even more interesting, a year or two from now, when you do upgrade to a DDR5 platform, CPUs will be even faster than the 12th gen Intel. So you get an even bigger benefit to DDR5. So overall, the point of this video is to show that there are tangible benefits to moving to DDR5 memory. Now, it doesn't make sense for people to do so today because it's just not financially worth it, but in the not too distant future, it will be, and all of those performance gains will be yours, 
and possibly even substantially more. So for me, that's a good thing. So that's why I wanted to bring out this video because of all the cool stuff coming out uh, under very extreme CPU demanding situations. RAM is now the limitation. CPUs are outpacing DDR4 pretty good. But even a fast DDR4 4000 kit, which is far more reasonably priced, can mitigate that if you don't want to switch platforms. So yeah, I'm pretty interested to see where things go. I'm hoping prices normalize coming back down to earth and we can all be rocking super high 120 FPS on games that I just really didn't think it was going to happen, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider in the not too distant future. Hopefully we can get ourselves some GPUs at reasonable prices, which will also push CPUs harder. But here's to open to a great 2022 Hope you guys had a great new year. That's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.